Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we are diving into the compelling autobiography, Outsider in the White House. Originally published in 1997 as Outsider in the House and reissued in 2015, this book charts the political journey of Bernie Sanders, an iconic figure in US left-wing politics, from his early days protesting for civil rights in the 1960s to his groundbreaking 2016 presidential campaign challenging the influence of big money in politics. Sanders has been a trailblazer for social justice and economic fairness. Penned by Sanders himself, a self-proclaimed democratic socialist and a four-term mayor of Burlington, Vermont, this autobiography provides an in-depth look at his unique political philosophy. It is co-authored by Huck Gutman, a professor of English at the University of Vermont, and an accomplished academic and political advisor. This book is a must-read for anyone interested in understanding the 2016 U.S. presidential election, students of political science or political history, and voters seeking insight into the principles and policies of a formidable presidential candidate. Embark on this journey with us as we explore the inspiring story of an outsider's quest to reshape America's political landscape. Outsider in the White House, the political autobiography of the insurgent presidential candidate. Introduction. Peeling back the layers. Uncover the journey of America's most persistent political outsider, Bernard Bernie Sanders, a name that rings a bell in the ears of millions, universally recognized as a political anomaly. In the race for the Democratic Party's 2016 presidential nomination, he put the powers that be on their toes. Top dogs in Wall Street, influential bodies in Congress, and indeed the Democratic Party itself found themselves challenged. From his days as the mayor of Burlington, Vermont, through his time in the U.S. House of Representatives, then on to his service in the Senate, and eventually his run in the Democratic presidential primaries, Sanders has made a habit of echoing his beliefs loudly and clearly. Regardless of whether these found favor with the establishment or not, his voice was unwavering. In the intriguing narrative ahead, we'll pull back the curtains on Bernie Sanders' life, a fearless political player who is no stranger to opposition but continues to stand tall, turning his beliefs into actionable political initiatives. Throughout this journey, you'll gain insights into the roots of Sanders' political philosophy, how his early life shaped his ideologies, Sanders' tenacity in actualizing his political vision in Vermont in spite of facing heavy resistance, the significant impact Sanders has had on the legislative processes in the U.S. Congress. Part 1. Through the Lens of Hardship, Understanding the Indelible Impact of Financial Struggle on Sanders' Early Years. Born in 1941, In the heart of the Brooklyn borough of New York City, Bernard Sanders was no stranger to economic hardship. Although his family didn't drop below the poverty line, money was in perpetual short supply, sparking regular disputes between his parents over their limited resources. Growing up in this financially challenging landscape, Sanders developed an acute understanding of the impact of economic circumstances on everyday lives. For instance, his mother Dorothy was a picture of frugality. In an instance that remained with Sanders, he faced his mother's disapproval when he chose to shop at a neighborhood store instead of a more affordable supermarket. This single event underscored for him the importance of economic prudence. Meanwhile, his father, Elias, provided another perspective on the hardships of economic turmoil. A survivor of the Great Depression, Elias was a native of Poland, who had taken up the mantle of a paint salesman in America to sustain his family. His relentless commitment to hard work, despite the odds, however, led to tensions with Sanders, particularly when Sanders first showed an interest in furthering his education at college. A move Elias opposed in favor of more immediate financial gains. Yet, amidst these conflicting viewpoints, it was Sanders' elder brother, Larry, who helped shape their parents' financial wisdom into solid political ideologies. Larry, 
a chairman in the Democratic Party's Young Democrats group at Brooklyn College, introduced Sanders to the world of progressive political literature and meetings, which ultimately left an indelible mark on his young mind. By the time Sanders stepped into Brooklyn College in 1959, he was already armed with a wealth of knowledge about politics, economics, and history. These sparks of interest ignited into a flame when Sanders transferred to the University of Chicago to pursue political science the following year. Diving headlong into his studies, he buried himself in the basement library, consuming every book he could lay his hands on, further sharpening his political acumen. Part 2. Stepping into the Political Arena The Early Sparks of Sanders' Active Political Life While he wasn't absorbed in his books, Sanders found time to plunge himself into political activism at the University of Chicago. He associated himself with groups like the Young People's Socialist League and the Congress of Racial Equality, taking an active stand against racially segregated housing and schools. In 1968, at the age of 27, Sanders relocated to Vermont, marking the beginning of his political career. His formal entrance into party politics was spurred by an old college companion who introduced him to a progressive left-wing party, Liberty Union. The party's key agenda resonated with Sanders. They were dedicated to putting an end to the Vietnam War and championing social and economic justice. A year later, in 1971, Sanders attended his first Liberty Union gathering in Burlington, Vermont. The meeting was a turning point. He was so inspired that he volunteered to contend for a seat in the U.S. Senate representing the party. Though Sanders lost the election, finishing third with only 2% of the vote, the experience proved deeply transformative for him. The lively debates with his Republican and Democratic opponents during the campaign served as a powerful learning experience. Perhaps more significantly, the thunderous applause from the audience confirmed his beliefs. His progressive views and policies had mainstream traction. People agreed with his views. They were only waiting for someone bold enough to voice out these shared sentiments. Spurred by this realization, Sanders threw his hat into the ring once more, this time running for governor of Vermont under the Liberty Union banner. Although he received only 1% of the vote, the campaign shed light on another valuable insight. Winning an election isn't the only pathway to effect change. His Democratic competitor, Thomas Salmon, won the election, but went on to enact two popular policies that Sanders had championed, property tax reform and a state-funded dental insurance program for children hailing from lower-income families. As we'll see in the following section, these early political encounters carved the path for Sanders's mayoral campaign, preparing him for the battles ahead. Part 3. Sanders's Mayorship a glimpse into his political prowess. After a run for governor in 1976, in which Sanders earned 6% of the statewide vote and a solid 12% in Burlington, he set his sights on the mayoral seat of Burlington, Vermont, five years later. Buoyed by the backing of several activist groups and the city's police union, he clinched the election, winning by a narrow margin of 14 votes out of 10,000 cast and became the country's sole socialist mayor. His time in office was not without struggles, with the city council, primarily a mix of Republicans and Democrats, going to great lengths to oppose him. But Sanders wasn't one to shy away from challenges. Rather than directly locking horns with the council, he sought innovative ways to make changes without their support. Upon discovering wasteful spending on overpriced insurance contracts favoring politically connected businesses, Sanders broke this mold. By opening up the contracts to competitive bidding, he saved thousands of taxpayer dollars. These savings were then poured back into the community, funding public-friendly events like summer concerts and sports programs for underprivileged youth. These actions further solidified his political footing, setting the stage for a progressive shakeup in Burlington. In the city council election of 1981, 2. Sanders and his progressive allies campaigned fiercely, winning three additional seats. This expanded their representation to five out of 13 seats, giving them the power to veto bills proposed by their Republican and Democrat counterparts. 
However, the state legislature of Vermont presented a tougher battleground. Faced with resistance to his progressive tax reforms, Sanders sought alternative avenues to generate revenue. His efforts bore fruit as he introduced a 1% tax on meals and accommodations in the city's restaurants and successfully pushed private hospitals and universities to contribute more towards public emergency services. Part 4. Breaking Ground in Congress. How Sanders Proved the Potential of Independent Politicians. After serving four terms as the mayor of Burlington, Sanders felt a pull towards a larger stage. In 1988, he sought Vermont's single seat in the House of Representatives, finishing second with 38% of the votes. Far from being discouraged, he tried again two years later. This time, he emerged victorious, bagging 56% of the votes and becoming the first politically independent congressman in over 40 years. In Congress, Sanders co-founded the Congressional Progressive Caucus, CPC, an initiative aimed at uniting legislators with shared progressive goals. Although there were other groups advocating a progressive agenda, such as the Congressional Black Caucus, Sanders was aware that a truly effective progressive caucus should extend beyond a single ethnic group. By 1994, the CPC, formed with a group of left-leaning Democrats, had amassed 52 members and was on track to become one of the largest caucuses within the Democratic Party. The caucus staunchly opposed the Republican contract with America which sought to slash social welfare spending and overall expenditure. But Sanders' influence extended beyond fighting regressive policies. He demonstrated the possibility of progressives finding common ground with conservatives. As the lone independent member of the House, Sanders was unshackled from the limitations of party politics. This freedom gave him the unique ability to bring together Democrats and Republicans, forging unlikely alliances. This knack for building cross-party coalitions was demonstrated when Sanders rallied against George W. Bush's controversial Patriot Act. Sanders, in collaboration with House Democrats and a cohort of Republicans, introduced an amendment to a proposed bill aiming to limit the government's power to survey citizens' library records. Bush considered this challenge to his authority so severe that he threatened to veto the entire bill. Even though Bush eventually got his way, Sanders persisted in creating cross-party coalitions, focusing particularly on matters of civil liberties and privacy. Part 5. The Senate Journey. How Sanders Battled Established Politics. In 2006, after an impressive eight-term run in the House of Representatives, Sanders set his sights on the Senate. His campaign stirred the political waters as he secured a historically Republican-held seat with an overwhelming two-thirds majority. Throughout his tenure as a senator, Sanders maintained a steadfast stance against policies that catered to the affluent billionaire class, irrespective of whether these policies were backed by Republicans or Democrats. This stand became prominent during the 2008 Wall Street crisis, when both parties rallied behind a bailout package, which Sanders criticized as a reward to the very people responsible for the economic catastrophe. Instead, he contended, Those who fueled the crisis should pay the price and rescue themselves using their own wealth. The tax cuts from the Bush era presented another instance of bipartisan support, with both parties advocating for their extension. Sanders vehemently opposed this move, delivering an eight-hour Senate filibuster speech highlighting the unfairness of continuing tax relief for America's wealthiest 1%. But Sanders's role extended beyond opposition. He was a formidable proponent of reform. In the arena of healthcare, Sanders championed a universal, single payer healthcare system, akin to models seen in other Western nations. During the passage of the Affordable Care Act, ACA, he skillfully negotiated with allies within the White House and Senate to earmark $12.5 billion to finance community health centers. Often, his triumphs followed a particular strategy, pledging to vote in favor of a bill, such as the ACA, only if his progressive amendments were included. The Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act served as another example of this approach. Sanders viewed the act as insufficiently strict. As a condition for his support, 
he demanded the inclusion of an amendment permitting the Federal Reserve's first ever comprehensive audit. Part 6. Charting a Revolution. How Sanders' presidential bid aimed to stir America's working and middle class. In the fall of 2014, Sanders started toying with the idea of a presidential run. A significant question loomed large. Should he run as an independent or a Democrat? Eventually, he settled on the Democratic ticket, foreseeing that it would ensure the widest reach for his message. This message echoed the issues Sanders had passionately advocated for over the years. A universal healthcare system sat at the core of his ambitions. He firmly believed that every American, regardless of financial status, deserved the right to quality health care. Education was another area Sanders aimed to revolutionize. His plan called for the removal of all tuition fees for public colleges and universities, asserting that everyone deserved access to education. A key facet of Sanders' vision was a government that served the entirety of its people, not just the top 1%. If elected president, Sanders pledged to represent the interests of the working and middle classes. But capturing the Democratic nomination wasn't Sanders' sole objective. He aspired to trigger a political revolution, believing that the U.S. political system required a massive revamp. His ambition was to cultivate a movement that would fundamentally change Americans' perception of politics. A political revolution, in Sanders' view, extends beyond merely accruing votes. It entails educating people and equipping them with the tools to ensure their voices are heard, particularly those among the youth, who have traditionally shown little interest in politics. To engage this demographic and raise awareness about the prevailing challenges, Sanders planned to leverage social media and modern technologies to build a grassroots campaign. Regardless of the outcome of his presidential bid, Sanders aimed to inspire a more informed and politically active working and middle class, a true testament to his revolutionary spirit. Final Summary The core theme of this book, Bernie Sanders is a firm believer in the potential for a political revolution in America. He first brought about such change in Burlington, Vermont, during his mayoral tenure, and then carried the revolutionary spirit across the state when he was elected to the House and subsequently the Senate. Sanders has consistently been a champion for the working and middle class, advocating for democratic socialist tenets like universal health care and tuition-free public universities. In his autobiography, he shares his experiences as a non-conventional politician and passionately argues that a political revolution is indeed achievable in the United States. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then, happy reading and happy listening.